Hi friends, welcome back. In this video, we're going to do two practice problems to find the volume of shapes. So let's take a look at the first problem. Find the volume of the solid with a circular base of radius 1, where the cross sections perpendicular to the base are equilateral triangles. So we have an object, and the base of that object is a circle. So as you can see, this circle has a radius of 1, and we can call the distance from the x-axis to the top of the circle y. Now, if you put that circle on the table, there will be triangular cross sections sticking out of it. So it's like playing a bunch of cards, and you put these cards together to form this shape. But these cards are triangles. So if you take a look at this triangle, this is going to be the biggest triangle or the biggest cross section. And as you move to the left, the triangle gets smaller. And as you move from here to the right, the triangle gets smaller. So what does this shape look like? Well, it turns out that this object looks something like this, where the base is the circle, as you can see, and there is a pointy edge running from the top here to the bottom. So where does this edge come from? Well, it comes from the fact that the top of the triangle has a pointy edge. So that's how it forms this edge right over there. Now that we know what this object looks like, let's find the volume of this solid. So to find the volume of any object, we need to use the volume formula. So V is equal to the integral from A to B of A of X dx, where a of x is the area of the cross section, which is the triangle. So that's what we need to find first. We need to find the formula for the area of that triangle. So the area of a triangle is just one half times the base times the height. So we need to rewrite these variables in terms of x. And let me show you how to do that. So remember, I said that the distance from the x-axis to the top of the circle is y. So this distance right here, from here to here, that is this edge right there, that's going to be y. And over here, from the origin to the bottom, is also y. And so if we draw this triangle out, this is going to be y, and this side is also going to be y. And so the base is just 2y. So we can rewrite this formula as 1 over 2 times 2y times the height. So the 1 over 2 times the 2 are going to cancel out. And we can just simply rewrite it as y times the height. Now, the next step is we need to find the height. Now, remember, I said that the triangle are equilateral meaning that these two sides are the same. And if you remember from trigonometry, if you have a triangle where this side is 60 degrees, this side is a right triangle, I mean a right angle, and this is 30 degrees, then the ratio is going to be 2, 1, and the square root of 3. And so this is the height of the triangle that we're trying to find and according to the ratio, the height will simply be the square root of 3 times y. And so rewriting this, this is the same as y times the square root of 3y, which is the same as the square root of 3 times y to the power of 2. So that is simply the square root of 3 times y to the power of 2. So we successfully reduced the formula from two variables into one variable, but we still need to rewrite this in terms of x. So what is the formula for a circle with a radius of 1? Well, that formula will be y squared plus x squared is equal to 1. So if you graph this, that's going to give you this circle right over here. Now, all we need to do is solve for y. So let's rewrite this. That's going to be y squared is equal to 1 minus x squared. So y will be plus minus the square root of 1 minus 
x squared. And so all we need to do is plug this back into this equation right here. Let me do that. So the area will simply be the square root of 3 times plus minus the square root of 1 minus x squared to the power of 2. So don't forget the power of 2 right here. And that is equal to the square root of 3 times 1 minus x squared. So we found the formula of the cross section in terms of x. If we put this into the integral right there, that is going to give us the volume of this shape. So the volume of this shape is going to be v is equal to the integral from negative 1 to 1 because we want to find the volume of this shape. So that's the integral from negative 1 to 1 of a of x dx. So the area that we just found was the square root of 3 times 1 minus x squared dx. Now solving this integral will give us the volume. So let's rewrite this. Since the square root of 3 is just a number, we can bring it outside of the integral. So this is going to be the square root of 3 times the integral from negative 1 to 1 of 1 minus x squared dx. So this is pretty easy to find. If we take the antiderivative of that, so we have the square root of 3 times the antiderivative of 1, that's going to be x, and the antiderivative of negative x squared is going to be 1 over 3 times x to the power of 3, and we need to do it from 1 to negative 1. So that's going to be 1, this is going to be negative 1, and this is pretty straightforward. That's going to be the square root of 3 times, we just plug this in to the equation, so this is 1 minus 1 over 3 times 1 to the power of 3, so that's just going to be 1 over 3, minus, we put in the negative 1. So negative 1 put into x, that's going to be negative 1 minus 1 over 3 times negative 1 to the power of 3. So if we take a look at this, that's going to be negative 1 times negative 1 over 3, which is just positive 1 over 3. And we are so close to finishing this. So this is the same as the square root of 3 times 1 minus 1 over 3 plus 1 minus 1 over 3. That is going to be the square root of 3 times 2 minus 2 over 3. And again, the square root of 3 times 6 over 3, because that's a fraction, minus 2 over 3. So 6 minus 2, that's going to give you 4. So the square root of 3 times 4 over 3. And this is the volume of this shape over there. So we successfully found the volume of that shape, and we're done. Let's move on to the next question. An area, R, is bounded by y is equal to x squared, that is the pink function, and y is equal to x, that is the blue function, and the area between them is R. Now, find the volume of the solid that has R as the base. So that means that the distance between the blue and the pink function is the base, and the cross sections perpendicular to the x axis are squares. So the cross sections are going to be squares, making up the solid. Now, when the question says that the cross sections are perpendicular to the x axis, we know that we have to integrate with respect to x. So to find the volume of this shape, we use the volume formula, which is the integral from a to b of a of x dx. So a of x is the area of the base to the power of 2. So that's going to be the base to the power of 2. Now, if you remember what I said before, the base is the distance between the blue and the pink function. And so the base is the same as the top function, which is x, minus the pink function, which is x to the power of 2. And so we just need to substitute this back into our area equation. x 
minus x to the power of 2 to the power of 2 again. So we successfully found the area in terms of x, and if we put it back into the volume formula, that is going to give us the volume of this shape. So let's go ahead and do that. So we want to find the volume of this shape from 0 to 1. So the volume is going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of the area function that we just found. So that's going to be x minus x to the power of 2 to the power of 2 dx. So this is going to be equal to x minus x to the power of 2 times x minus x to the power of 2 again. And remember the rules. You have to take this, multiply by that, and take this and multiply by this. So that's going to give you x to the power of 2 minus x to the power of 3 minus x to the power of 3 again plus x to the power of 4. So that's simply going to be x squared minus 2x to the power of 3 plus x to the power of 4. So we can substitute this with this equation right here. So this is an integral that's pretty easy to solve. That's going to be equal to the antiderivative of x squared, which is just 1 over 3 times x to the power of 3, and the antiderivative of negative 2x to the power of 3. That's going to be x to the power of 4 divided by 4, which is the same as 1 over 2 x to the power of 4. So 1 over 2 x to the power of 4 plus the antiderivative of x to the power of 4. That's simply going to be 1 over 5 times x to the power of 5. And we need to do it from the upper bound, which is 1, and the lower bound, which is 0. That's going to be the same as 1 over 3 times 1 to the power of 3 minus 1 over 2 times 1 to the power of 4 plus 1 over 5 times 1 to the power of 5 minus the lower bound. So don't forget, that's the same as 1 over 3 times 0 to the power of 3 minus 1 over 2 times 0 to the power of 4 and plus 1 over 5 times 0 to the power of 5. But of course, we know that this is going to be 0, and anything that times 1 to the power of any number is going to be itself. So this is the same as 1 over 3 minus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 5. And we're so close to finishing. So we just need to solve these fractions. Let's choose 30. So this is 30. That's going to be 10 minus that's going to be 30 this is going to be 15 plus 6 over 30 so 10 minus 15 is going to give you negative 5 and 5 plus 6 is positive 1 so the answer will simply be 1 over 30 and this is the volume of the shape that we're talking about so that represents the volume and that is it